Hello, everyone. We're going to be answering some questions today. Let's get into it. For the first question, what are the specs of my PC? I'm going to run through them. I have an AMD Ryzen 9 3900 XT for my processor. I have a really cheap case. It's from NZXT. It's a mid-tower. I have the red version, the red and black one. Nothing crazy. And then for my RAM, it's just some Vengeance. I picked up from Best Buy. I have four 16 gigabytes. So in total, I have 64 gigs of RAM. Here's my power supply. Uh, they don't make this a anymore. It's not a big deal. But you, you just want things that are compatible. And in this case, I have the HX 850i. And then for my graphics card, I have the ultra thick 5700 XT from Radon XFX. And then for my motherboard, I'm working with an Aorus Elite Wi Fi X570. All right, those are my specs. I built it in like 2020. So I wouldn't recommend, like, yeah, use my build. Use all the new stuff because <laughs> there's always new stuff coming out. Just make sure it's compatible. Next question. Why is it not possible to access the course? The payment doesn't work. So there's about three answers to this, and then I might have a possible solution. So here we go. The first one is unfortunate because there's just some countries that the U.S. can't do business with. So there's just a sanction to where you can't buy my product. I know, kind of sucks. Two, use a different browser. Most of the time, if it's not the first one, this usually helps that person buy the product. So just try a different browser. Third, Teachable just doesn't work sometimes. I, I've had it with Teachable, <laughs> but I wish school was more prominent when I was starting a course because I think I would probably be there now. But now Teachable kind of has a community tab. It's terrible. So I try to have people go to Discord. Discord's okay. But now I've just siphoned from YouTube, Teachable, and Discord. And I think in the future, I'm going to have all my stuff on YouTube. Products, courses, it's all just going to be wrapped up in a membership on YouTube with free content, of course. So that's my answer to that. I'm sorry for the frustration. So many people have messaged me about this, but those are some answers and solutions. All right, next one. Amazing video. How do you get the emojis? So I just went on Emojipedia and downloaded and put them in Photoshop and did that for a bunch of emojis. Uh, now, once you have them or any images that you use, I would highly recommend you use, if you pay for Adobe, you have 100 gigabytes of cloud storage and you can use your library. So if you go to Window and go to Libraries, you can put whatever images inside of your library. and you always have access to them inside of all of the programs, After Effects, Premiere, uh, because it's all in the cloud. That is your library that's in the cloud. How magical. So I just have all of my stuff in here, whatever I need to use. It's all in there. And then for new stuff, like if I need to add new things or if I have like a safety zone, I just have all of these at in the library so I can always access them. I don't have to open up like a master file list. They can all be right here. Same goes for sound effects. So use the library inside of Premiere if you haven't already. Next one. All right. Umer says, how to edit a reel of anyone from Instagram? Where will we find raw video or reel for that? So I don't have like a quick way to do this. It is basically sourcing and using context clues. So I'm going to pull up what I do every single day. So this is how we source content. I would put it in something like this where it's just a spreadsheet to make it as easy as possible. Try and like mark to yourself, what bucket would this fall into of what people like about this clip? So in this case, it's practical. What format is it in? Oh, this person is giving a speech. And then I'll eventually find the link for the source. Great. And then I'll cut it up and then send it to an editor and the editor will have their edit. Bada boom, bada bang. So in this case, there is one goal. So this is from Oprah Winfrey. See here. But no matter what challenges or... Okay. So take note of some of the things that are said in the actual video, right? In this case, it's on TikTok, but this can work for YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And what I'm talking about is Cobalt. Cobalt.tool. So this downscales the footage and downloads whatever the reel is. Most of the time. It doesn't work all the time. So we're going to try it out right now. So I want this video, go to Cobalt, paste that link, and then we'll see if it works. It sure did. 
And guess what? It's downloading. There we go. So now when I put it on a timeline, I can cut it up to whatever I screen record, which is why I would recommend if you find like 1080p plus or in 4K, I would recommend using OBS to just screen record whatever the moment is because Cobalt downscales it. It's just going to downscale it to either 720p or 540. So it's going to be pretty blurry if you have like a good source. So I would recommend actually using a screen recorder like OBS. OBS is totally free. All right. So we downloaded this clip. Awesome. So I'm going to take note of that first phrase, but no matter what challenges or setbacks. Okay. I'm just have that in the back of my mind. I can write it down, but I'm going to take note of like where she is. So she's wearing a red dress. Looks like she's giving a speech. There's people behind her. Okay. Let's see what I can find on YouTube. Now I already have the source link here, but let's go ahead and do a quick search. So I'm inside of YouTube. I'm going to do Oprah speech red dress and see if anything comes up. Okay. All right. Not that one. There's people behind her. So this is literally what I would do. I would just go through. I have my context clues and I will eventually find this. So instead of maybe dress, I could do just Oprah speech. Let's do graduation. Commencement speech. And there it is. Look at that. So now I have my source. I can take that link, share it, copy it. I'll go into my little, go into my spreadsheet and boom, there it is. So now I'll click on this. Now, what were those phrases? This happens with most of the videos you'll find on YouTube. Not all of them. Some of them don't have it. But when they do, oh, it's amazing. And in this case, it does. And what I'm talking about is a transcript. So we're going to open up this transcript. And what were those first words? But no matter what challenges or setbacks. Okay. So I'm just going to take one of those keywords. So I'll go ahead and do control F. Do not use a search bar inside of here. It just does not work. So let's do setbacks. And look at that. We can jump to it. So what was the first one? Okay. Someone in the comments, but I can jump to that. So what did this say? Setbacks or disappointments you may encounter along the way. Awesome. So now I can screen record from this moment. So you want to watch the whole reel to make sure you have like all the context because of course it could be cut up. So you're going to be making those cuts once you screen record it and throw it into Premiere with the downloaded Col Cobalt version. There you go. That's how you source content. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Hasib has some really good feedback. You're doing a great job, but making it complicated for beginners. They might look at the workflow and leave the video just because there are too many steps. You can do it all just using After Effects if this is looking scary to anyone. So this was on the how to make 3D reels for Houston Cold. And he's right. I mean, you don't have to use Premiere. You can honestly do all of it inside of After Effects. And I think I would. I think if I were to, not even looking at the video that I made back in April, but how I was, you know, even making the script was I'm going to break it down to Premiere and then put it in After Effects and then put it in Photoshop and then finish it up in Premiere with the sound design. Be because that's what I was actually doing. But of course, like instead of you can simplify all of that by doing it inside of After Effects. There's just different tools that I like to use in all of these programs that kind of weave together. So I really like this feedback. No, I really appreciate it because in truth, you can. One of the questions that I think we'll get to in the next one is about the uh, SRT file that actually puts all of your captions from Premiere Pro into After Effects. And you honestly don't have to do that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. So this is great. Totally agree. You can do it all inside of After Effects. So to finish off this video, I'm going to answer some more questions in the next one. Someone said, I can't run my SRT file in AE. Please help. So I was pretty cryptic in some of the comments that I answered in the past of like, hey, just Google it. You'll find the script if you look hard enough. And then I just provided this in our course just like right there for all the people that purchased it. But I was like, hey, you can technically find this online like I did. So 
here it is. I went ahead and just Googled how to import SRT file into After Effects. And there is this nice post from a few years ago. And if you go down here, someone has a script, but this is paid. This is paid from AE Scripts. It's $35. I was like, eh. But there's an actual creator, coder, a tour tour that made his own script. So here it is. Here's an importer, the exporter. I just downloaded the importer and it worked great. So we're going to live test this to see if it works. So here we go. <laughs> All right. So here's something that I cut for my team. I have a transcript and I'm going to create captions inside of Premiere Pro. And so I wasn't specific on to how many captions that's going to be, but that is something you, that you want to take into account that's going to be imported into After Effects. So this, so this is kind of like a deeper discussion on what was shown in the Houston Cold video. So I'm making the captions in Premiere Pro and then I'm importing them into After Effects. And how I do that is I, I can kind of skip some steps by using the engine inside of Premiere Pro instead of typing out each of those captions. So I have my captions. We're just going to say all of these are great, right? I'm just going to say that. So all these are great. Obviously, if you're actually doing this, you would make sure that all the timing's right, everything's good, but we're going to export this SRT file. And so just make sure that you have it in a place to where you, you can find it. So here's, here we go, SRT. So now I have that file of all of those captions. So I'll go into After Effects. I'll go to Scripts. And I'm going to install. This is a new version of After Effects. So let's see if this works. So I have my downloaded from a tour tour. And that is JSX. See where it is? There it is. So there it is. The After Effects import. Select it. One or more scripts. Files has successfully copied your preferences. Restart After Effects to add the script file in scripts menu. Click OK. Great. So now I can close After Effects. Open it back up. So I'm inside of After Effects. We're going to make a composition. Let's do something. I think my clip was a little over a minute. Let's do, oh, I don't know, 06, one minute. Okay. Because I believe it was around there. Yeah. It was a minute and three seconds. No worries. So here's our comp. I'm now going to go to File, Scripts, Run Script File. And now I'm going to type in, hey, a tour, tour or the .jsx, in case you have other scripts, we're going to open it up. Great. And guess what? Now I can go and import an SRT file. So in this case, go to my downloads. There's our SRT file. Click OK. And it still works. It still works on 2025 After Effects. So there you go. All of your captions inside of After Effects now. So, why put them in here? You can just do more effects. If you don't have plugins or paid plugins inside of Premiere Pro that do that does the animations for you with motion with Mogorts or mo, motion graphics, you could make whatever you want inside of here. So in this case, they're all black. I can turn that off so you can actually see it. But there are all of my captions, and you can do whatever you want with them inside of After Effects now. So that is what I was trying to accomplish or show you. And that is the process to show you uh, that you still can do it in 2025. So Vin Tran, hopefully that helps. Let me know. I will go ahead and put this in the description so you can grab this script. This can definitely be handy if you want to use it, but simple enough. If you don't like my instructions, there's also just written instructions right here. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for tuning in again. I know it's been a while. Uh, it's nice to kind of be back in the saddle, but uh, I just want to provide more value and we're on to like another generation of editors that need to know how to operate this stuff because we have some new stuff in here, man. We've got some new stuff in here and I just want to answer some questions the best of my abilities and answer some more in this next edition. So I will be seeing you soon. Thank you so much.